the amplifier topologies used in operational amplifiers fall in the category of linear amplifiers. Linear amplifiers are the classes A, AB as a mixture between A and B, and the class B. And then there are the hybrid amplifiers, which are the class C, but don't have any significant meaning anymore. The hybrid are between linear and switch mode amplifiers, where switch mode amplifiers are simply the next letter in the alphabet, which is class D amplifiers. Very often, the class D amplifiers are mistaken for digital amplifiers, but D is simply the next letter in the alphabet. Furthermore, there are the class E and the class F amplifiers, which are also switch mode amplifiers operating in resonant mode. Switch mode operation means that we are applying pulses as the gate source voltage for the high side device and the same for the low side device. So the high side power MOSFET is connected with its drain to the positive supply rail. Its source is a common node with the drain of the low side MOSFET and the source of the low side MOSFET is connected to the negative supply rail. Those pulses, both for the low side and high side, are either zero or way beyond the threshold voltage of the transistor. When the gate source voltage is higher than the threshold voltage of the transistor, for example, if the gate source voltage for the high side is high, then we are driving the transistor into the linear operation mode and we are minimizing the drain source resistance, which is also called the on resistance of the MOSFET. Simultaneously, the other MOSFET would be in its off state, meaning the gate source voltage is as close to zero as possible and therefore ideally an open. Typically, there is a remaining leakage current which is down in the nanoampere range. Whereas the on resistance of a MOSFET that is on typically is in the milliohm range. That means that this node, the so called switch node, is either getting pulled high towards the positive supply rail when the high side MOSFET is on, or it's getting pulled low to the negative supply rail when the high side MOSFET is off and the low side MOSFET is on. Therefore, we get a square wave representation on that switch node. That square wave is getting filtered by a second order low pass filter created by the inductor and the capacitor here. And its output voltage is the output voltage across the load. Now the pulses driving the gate source voltage of the high side and the low side device are alternating. So you either have the high side device on or the low side device on, where the on state again is nearly a perfect short or the off state is a nearly perfect open. Again, through that short and open, we pull the so-called switch node all the way to the supply voltages. The information that we actually want to amplify, so the signal that we want to amplify from the input of the amplifier is now coded in the so-called duty cycle and the switch node would actually follow the gate drive voltage of the high side device. But whereas the gate source voltages are alternating between zero and somewhere below the maximum gate voltage, the switch node is operating between VDD and VSS. In this case here, we're seeing a duty cycle of the high side MOSFET of around 25% and the low side is on for about 75%. That means that the switch node is approximately also 25% of the time pulled towards the positive supply rail and 75% of the time to the negative supply rail. 
the duty cycle is varying all the time during the operation following the input signal. So if the input signal is falling, the duty cycle is getting less. And if the input signal is rising, the duty cycle is rising as well. As soon as we apply that switch node voltage to a second order low pass behavior, the output of that low pass is amplified proportionally to that duty cycle and that means it is following the input voltage. The Bode plot of a switch mode amplifier therefore is following this curve here. We have a second order filter which we can see from the face that is turning towards minus 180 degrees where it's starting at zero and if we have 20 dB per decade on the y-axis here means we are starting out at 60 dB amplification inside the pass band we can now see that the amplitude of the transfer function is falling with 40 dB per decade and compared to the linear amplifier with the same DC gain, we are reaching the transient frequency already one decade earlier.